Costello program, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobaccos. The Abbott and Costello program, with a modern rhythm of Will Osborne's orchestra, Iris Adrian, our singing star Connie Haynes, and spotlighting that chunky, chubby little cherub, who, when caught asking a neighbor lady to take her shoes off, because his Uncle Artie Stebbins said she had crow's feet, calmly said, I'm my bad boy! Well? Well, Costello? Where have you been? Why weren't you here fixing up the house for the party? Oh, hey, Abbott, I had to get down to jail to get my landlady out. You know, Mrs. Satchel Puss? I had to get her out on bail. She got arrested for shoplifting. They finally caught her. Uh, I thought she Mm -hmm. was too smart to get caught. Well, she made a mistake. She stole an alarm clock and hid it in her bustle. Well, how did they catch her? Her bustle went off at a quarter of eight. Uh, (laughs) Never mind your landlady. Never mind your landlady. Did you send out the invitations for the party? Oh, yeah. I got them right here. Look what it says. What is it? Luke Costello invites you to a Christmas party to be held at his home. B-A-P-O-B. B-A- B-A-P-O-B. Yep, yep. You mean R-S-V-P. Oh, no. I mean B-A-P-O-B. Bring a pound of butter. <laughs> oh, boy. What a party I'm going to have. My Aunt May will bring her cranberry sauce. That's her specialty. Aunt Catherine will bring her plum pudding. That's her specialty. And Ann Eva will bring her 14 children. That's uh, that's a nice family. Yeah, I have, yeah. <laughs> Never mind your relatives. Look, forget about your relatives for a minute, Lou. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you remember to get souvenirs for everybody? Oh, souvenirs. Yes. Yeah, I'm having favors for the girls. At 12 o'clock, I'm going to turn the lights off. Oh, yeah. Any favors for the men? What do you call turning the lights off? Uh, look, uh, uh, who did you invite besides your relatives? Oh, a lot of movie stars. And I invited Lana Turner. And she kissed me. And I turned to kiss you. The smoke isn't coming out of my ears for nothing. <laughs> How about the tree? Uh, did you get a tree? Hmm? Did you get a tree? Oh, did I get a tree? Yes. I got the biggest Christmas tree you ever right. saw. Well. I just got through putting it in the living room. You did? What a tree! It's six feet higher than the ceiling. Well, it's a shame to have to cut the top off. That's the way I felt about it, too. Oh, sure, sure. So I cut a hole in the ceiling. I have... <laughs> you cut a hole in the ceiling of our, our living room? Yeah, this will be the first Christmas we ever had a tree in our bathroom. I... <laughs> what kind of a tree did you get? Is it a fur? Oh, yes, it's one of those... What did you say? I said, did you get a fur? No, I got a tree. Uh, oh, stop the silliness. Uh, I want to see your fur. See my fur? Certainly. What am I, a silver fox? No. no, no <laughs> dummy. I'm not talking about the uh, fur, if you are. The fur, the fur, I mean, has an eye in it. Oh, the fur has an eye in it? Yes. Just one eye? Certainly, there's just one, one eye in fur. Must be I, J. Fox. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's the one I'm talking to you. Yes, sir. I'm talking about a fur tree. Uh-huh. Now, will you quit talking about the fur with you in it? You doesn't belong in the kind of fur I'm talking about. I doesn't belong in that kind of fur? Oh, yes. I belongs in it. But uh, you doesn't. Uh, why should you belong in fur if I doesn't? I happen to look better in fur than you do. I'm prettier than you. I'm cuter than you. <laughs> Bad bad boy. Boy. No, no remarks, no remarks. You're a bad boy. Never mind. I'm trying to find out what kind of a Christmas tree you got. Look, wait a minute. Here, I've got it. What kind of bark did it have? What kind of bark? Yes. Uh, didn't you notice the uh, tree's bark? No, I have my ear, my son. No, no, no. Bark, bark, bark. Oh, bark. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. Now, tell her, the bark of the tree is the outer coat. Did the uh, tree have a rough coat? No, but the girl who sold it to me had on a smooth sweater. No. <laughs> and no time, no time for singing, please. Uh, the bark is the coat. Yeah. You find it on the trunk of a fir tree. A tree has a trunk? Oh, of course. That must be where he keeps his coat and fur. No, Costello. I'm, I'm going to try to explain it to you. No. Now, all Christmas trees belong to the pine family. Oh, no, they don't. Oh, yes. This Christmas tree belongs to me, no, brother. No, wait a minute. Let the pine family get the rose tree. <laughs> I don't think you know anything about trees. Who don't? You don't. I do. I make my own trees. Did you see them yourself? Did I see them? (laughs) Yes, yes, I asked you. Did you see your own trees? 
Yes, I see them every day. I see them this morning. I see them last night. You can come over and see them anytime oh, you want. How can I see them when you see them first? Look, Abbott, what have I got in front of my house? Uh, trees. Did you see them? No. Did I see them? Yes. In other words, you looked at my trees, but you didn't see them. Uh, that's right. Let me smell your breath. I don't know why I spent time with you. I was trying to tell you about the pine tree. Uh, we get tar from pine. We get what? A tar. Tar. Haven't you ever heard of pine tar? No, but I heard of a tree tar. Tree tar? Yeah. Clang, clang, clang went the tree tar. Ah. Clang, clang, clang went the tree tar. As a Christmas present to her camel fans, lovely Connie Haynes repeats the song she helped make so popular. With my high socks collar and my high top shoes and my hair up, my high up on my head, I went to lose a jolly hour upon the trolley and lost my heart instead. With his light brown derby and his bright green tie, he was quite the handsomest of men. Connie, I can't think of anything quite as pleasant as your voice. Except perhaps the smoke of camels on my T-zone. The T-zone. T for taste, T for throat. The zone where smokers test the smoke of any cigarette. Right. It's with his own T-zone that each smoker must judge a cigarette. How the first cigarette of the morning tastes on your tongue. How even the last cigarette of the day feels to your throat. Only your T-zone can tell. That's how millions of smokers, forced to try many different brands when cigarettes were scarce, learned how good a camel is. And that's why more smokers prefer camels today than ever before. C-A-M-E-L-S For camels are the choice of experience. Costello, what did we have to come downtown for? Oh, I gotta get some more spaghetti, Abbott, so I can finish trimming my Christmas tree. I couldn't find any tinsel this year, so I'm trimming a tree with spaghetti. And boy, does it look beautiful. Oh, what's beautiful about trimming a tree with spaghetti? Every time I plug it in, the meatballs light up. <laughs> there you go. There you go with that silliness again. Hey, Abbott, look who's in the car. It's that movie actress, Betsy May Mucho. Hello, Miss Mucho. Hello, boys. Gee, I'm glad I saw you. I want to invite you to my Christmas party tonight, Miss Mucho. Oh, I'm very sorry, but I have to go down to Los Angeles. I'm having a dinner party at the Ambassador Hotel. <laughs> the Ambassador Hotel. Oh, sure, Abbott. You know where the Ambassador is. That's the home of the Cuckoo Nut Groove. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be a thrilling dinner. Yeah. We're going to have crab louis and steamed clams. Clams? <laughs> yes. Don't you just adore clams? No, I'd rather have a plate of Freud oosters. <laughs> well, I must 
be Ski Dawdling along. I beg your pardon? I must be Ski Dawdling along. Oh, we the same. The short time. I sure knock off those Spanish words, don't I? Well, that's one turn down for your party. I don't care, Rabbit. I don't care if she don't want to come. Well. Here comes my girlfriend, Lena Gensler. She'll come to my party tonight. She's madly in love with me. Ah, there you are, you sawed-off Boris Karloff. <laughs>